expectations. The headlines are as scary as the scandals that we are witnessing. Mm. And you think that the headlines are scary, you go into the matter and it's even worse. Because corruption is now virtually an official second national anthem in our nation. And everybody is doing what they have to do. State resources are taken in reckless abundance by people and they become richer. The unfortunate thing is that the church and the mosque tend to glorify these individuals because when we go to church, then they are identified and put on front roll, right? They pray for them, special prayers. In fact, all of us are urged to come and give them special prayers for looting and stealing our wealth for their own glory. Then those of us who join the church, we are just giving a hand raise. And then the Lord be with you, and we go. I, I don't know the church that you attend. That well, happens. I was but born in my Catholic. church. It doesn't happen. Then. It does. No, it doesn't. Don't happen pretend in my church. that. Oh, it's true. Which church? I, I go to Power of Worship International, and, and I'm it doesn't that happen it happens. there. It happens. All they 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 bring the so-called rich people. They sit in front. They don't, regardless of where they are, source of I'm wealth. not rich, but I sit in front. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> the motivation for your sitting in front, right? But uh, let me start off with what the newspapers have for us, okay? I'm at your service. So I'll start with the Finder newspaper. And I read, Ecobank donate to Akosombo Dam spillage victims. Newmont tops all at 20th Ghana Club 100 awards. Jinapur laments regression of global efforts to combat climate change. NIA to pilot registration of Ghanaians abroad February 2024, says Professor Atefua. And SHS, GES interdicts several heads over alleged collection of unauthorized monies. Now, um, I think uh, about a week ago, no, not a week ago, just this Friday, and my mother was telling me about a woman who has been interdicted because she ended up, you know, telling um, the students to pay money for, is it, is it cardigan or sportswear or something? I don't know why some of the head teachers do this. Anyway, the Ghanaian publisher newspaper is the next newspaper I am reading, the Ghanaian publisher. Kwabne Japan rallies support for Baumia. Prima calls on CSOs to safeguard free SHS. Dr. Kwabna Donko backs lithium deal. Ghana's future lies with STEM, Education Minister says so. And why we embarked on digitization, Baumia explains. Now, today, one of our topics happens to be with you know, uh, the vice president, when he actually was addressing uh, some students from KNUSD, and he said that, um, you know, the, the Ghana card will be powerful, that, you know, there'll be a time where if you have to purchase a vehicle, it will enable you to. But he has come out to say that he didn't mean that the Ghana card is what will be used to pay for the cars. No, he didn't say that. He rather says that it will give you a, a credit score. You can be tracked with your Ghana card so you can pay, <coughs> you know, with, I don't know if it's payment terms or we'll break down. We'll break it down. Break it down when it's time for us to talk about that. The Republic Press newspaper is the next newspaper I am delving into. Baumia Defense the Digital Agenda highlights impact on corruption fight. Fire rips through French line section of Kumasi Central Market. Anas said to unleash shocking expose on organized crime in Ghana. Anas again, wow. Bleaching causes change in cops, not mistakes by mortuary men, says morticians. I know sometimes some people will go for their family members and they'll say that person used to be fair, but we picked up a dark person. So the morticians are saying that, no, it is not that we didn't do something right, but there's a possibility that your family member or your loved one was bleaching. So when the person died, the person returned to their natural color. A rich sector witnesses transformation as farmers embrace fresh initiatives and Mahama runs to police over use of credentials. All right. Um, we'll do the next newspaper. The next newspaper is the, the Punch newspaper. Punch, daring to be different. Abransi chief honored by Amansie West District Assembly. K 
KGL Technology breaks into the top GC100 companies, okay? Dr. Kwame Che, recognized by South African book selling platform, Education Minister, praised for successful school placement exercise. Kumasi Central Market engulfed by fire and a Betifi resident grateful to Brian A. Champong. All right, that's the Punch newspaper. The Daily Searchlight newspaper is the next Daily Searchlight. Police criminal report requirements for international travelers criticized. MP accuses controller, accountant general of putting hundreds of MPP delegates on salary. This is one of our topics that we'll be discussing as well. Uh, Ghana's lithium leap, a comparative look at African lithium mining agreements and police criminal report requirements for international travelers criticized. Okay, so... Um, hmm. I don't know who is criticizing it, but is it not a step in the right direction? If we want to get some sort of sanity in our system where we are also offering visa on arrival, why not? There's nothing wrong with that anyway. The Ghanaian Times newspaper, Parliament begins consideration of LGBTQI bill. Another topic we'll be delving into this morning. Support new leadership to restore ideals of CPP. Enhanced security during upcoming December events, the National Security Ministry warns event organizers. For collecting unauthorized monies from SHS students, 11 headmasters land in hot water. GES initiates investigations into their conduct. And court jails man 12 months for 50,000 Ghana, 50, Ghana cities. That's. The Daily Guide newspaper is the next newspaper. KGL breaks into top 100 companies. Uh, Equiapem chiefs root for Sami Awuku. Controller, Accountant General, debunks false, false claims. We've made progress in formalizing economy, says Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And 10 SHS heads in trouble over Bola truck suit petrol fees. Yes, I said it. It was the truck suit I was talking about. You can imagine. So they charge the parents to pay for Bola to pay for truck suit, to pay for petrol. Wow. Mm. Some entertainment stories here. Yeah. People reached out for threesome with my wife, says Harold Aminya, okay? 2023 Eastern Music Awards held in Koforidia. Nigerians hate me, says Bernard Boy. And that will be all for the Daily Guide newspaper. So um, we are ready and poised for the conversation this morning. We hope that you at home, you are poised for this conversation as well as we delve into what our topics have for us. Now, there's another thing that's actually been, we've been talking about. It happens to do with um, the fuel, the contaminated fuel. I was telling Bernard, and Bernard was quite surprised. He was asking me, are you sure that this is actually happening? Well, let me welcome Honorable as he's taking a seat. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning. How are you? I'm blessed and you. I'm fine, thank you. It's good to have you. Bernard was asking of you just before you came. Oh, really? Yeah, he was a campaign <laughs> manager, so he was asking. But he, was, he refused to come on the, the field on election day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's on, it's on suspicion, just like the CPP, <laughs> National Executive. But, we are both on suspicion. <laughs> the constituents have suspended us from <laughs> representing them. And so we have to suspend the campaign. <laughs> um, but I was really shocked. You were? Why, was shocked why were you the shocked? outcome. Mm. I thought that he done, he's done sufficient yeah. for his constituents. I thought that he is one of the people who is very common with the people. Uh, he lives with them. He works with them. Mm -hmm. He interacts with them virtually on a daily basis. And even when we finish programs from here, you see that he has to be within the constituency and will close after 10 when everybody. So I thought that he was in touch with the constituents. But it also turned out that despite that he is a businessman, <laughs> the people had lots of money. And instead of allowing ideas to prevail, money prevailed. And you know <laughs> that it prevailed in most of the constituencies. That's the issue. And so it was the highest bidder that won. And particularly if you look at the trend it's like those who are pro prosumed to the vice president and the presidency. 
in most of the constituencies. Will he agree to that? But no, he doesn't need to agree. I mean, and I'm not saying this for his agreement. I'm saying it as it happened, because you just take a critical look, and if you were not within the presidency, your chances of scaling through was a difficult one. So you ought to probably have noted that why the president declined to appoint you and to choose people and anointed them at his favorites. It's a game that we all will have to battle. You remember the Efutu area where George Ander had to come out crying mm. at a certain point that the president went openly endorsing his uh, spokesperson. And he had been an MP at a time that it was very difficult. The NDC was in power. He managed to use whatever means to win elections. By some strange reasons, when he had an accident, he could not get mm -hmm. to the constituency. Mm -hmm. He lost. He expected sympathy from the presidency. He lost his job as a deputy minister. Then all of a sudden, the president goes supporting Eugene Ahin to win that constituency. So it's evident, and I'm sure that if you go to Bantama now, you know that the president has declared support for the minister for works and housing. Asenso. Asenso. Meanwhile, every other member of the party is your, your person. So for you to be making such declarations tells that, look, this is a very divisive president. This is a very partisan. Uh, Harry, Harry, who actually, you know, contested, is not saying all of these things. So, Harry, But are, are he doesn't you, need to okay? say, I mean, we... You are speaking on his behalf? I'm, no, I'm not speaking for him. Okay. Not, not for him. I'm speaking what it is. And I think that we are in the house. We are children of one father. And the father decides that, no, one person deserves to do something and the rest of us are not competent. It brings division. The day that our father will not be there, you think that we can rally support for each other. And I think that, look, fairness and fair, fair grounds is required. And the president must be measured in the kind of endorsements that he's making. Anyway, um, Harry, how are you, though? So, sorry, bro. Sorry. I have changed my name to Harry for maybe. Oh, Hey, Ben. Forgive me. We have you to know, investigate who is here. I know. One of, <laughs> last week you were not here. Uh, her co uh, host was on crash with a baboon. <laughs> and so today she is crashing on a Henry. We have to find out. I, I agree. Hey, Ben. How are you? Please, Forgive me, okay? Forgive me. <laughs> how um, are you? I'm very fine. Um, let me take the opportunity to thank you all for your support. And the advice um, during the primaries. Um, just as Bernard have already said, we have been with the people for a very long time. Um, their problems and their challenges are ours. Uh, but they thought this time around, you have done your best, and therefore let's give opportunity to someone else as well. Um, as to whether someone is uh, um, presidential or the vice president's candidate, um, I cannot say that, but all what we will say, or I'll, what I will say is that there's a big task ahead of us. During my campaign, one thing I've been telling the people is that I'm looking at the aftermath of the primaries mm -hmm. and not the primaries. Because things that we'll be saying about each other will tell us whether we are winning the seat or not. Oh, no. So if we castigate among ourselves, if we say so many things among ourselves, when we finish with the primaries, we'll see. Whether you can come to me or I can come to you and tell them, let's come together and do the work. And that's a major challenge that we have, in, especially in Greater Accra. I must be honest and sincere with you. The last time I told the original chairman that you have a big task ahead of you in the 2024 election, mm. especially with the outcome of the parliamentary primaries in the orphan constituency, mm -hmm. 20 of them. Then we, on the 27th of next month, we have orphan, uh, sorry, sitting members system, of parliament. Yeah. And I can tell you, in some constituencies, people that are contesting and things that are happening today, I hope and believe that when we finish, mm -hmm. we'll be able to rally everybody behind for the task ahead of us in 2024. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that the NDC will sit down on our roof to see that, oh, we'll take all the 34 constituencies in Greater Accra. Neither will the don't forget that the NDC have had their primaries almost about a year ago. Whatever differences that they have so had, they've been able to resolve, they have been able to resolve it. 
We are having a primaries just about two weeks ago. God willing, next week, Tuesday, we are having an assembly election. Then we celebrate um, Christmas and New Year. Mm -hmm. The time frame for us to campaign will be very short. You are now going to do reconciliation. You are now going to call people for people to come and apologize. Yesterday, let me, Rosalind. Yesterday, I had an opportunity. No, I, I went to church mm -hmm. with my party people to thank God. In the evening, I decided to do some small party. And then, in the course of the conversation, my son said something. And I, I, in fact, I cried. What did she say? That somebody came to her, told her that, in fact, the person called her, oh, where can I find you? So I'm in church, come. And she went to the, the person went to the church. And the person said, you know what? I know you are only to you and your brother. But do you know what your brother has done? He has taken you to a malam. Killed you for rituals. For, your, for his elections. I cried. Wow. To that extent. That's how they are defaming people. To that extent. Because of election. Somebody said, me, I have killed somebody. Cut the person's head, cut the legs and the hands, and then buried it in my house, and took the body to Amasama, and buried there, and gave a, bought a motorbike to the Amasama chief to protect the body that I put there. So when you finish with this, can you come to me? Can you come and tell a medra to accompany you for a campaign? You cannot. So me, I've been telling them that the aftermath is very important and not the election that we are going to have. But for me, for the sake of the party, and for the sake of we winning 2024, I will let it go. But others may not. But for me, I know what, is, what I'm looking for in the MPP government. So I will do everything what possible. Looking I'm looking for MPP to break the eight. So whatever I will do in my capacity as a former member of parliament for the constituency, I will do it. Fantastic. All right. This is coming from Honorable Ebeneza and uh, Honorable Ebeneza Nati. Can you imagine? That's what the allegations are. Uh, but but, very, but I'm, I'm surprised yeah. that he, he is shocked to hear that. <laughs> to hear that. I mean, these are things that people do, right? And so once they are seeking power, they stop at nothing. In fact, there is a common saying in our language that they will sell their parents in order to win political power. And when they win political power, then people return their mothers <laughs> to them. So the assumption is that the end justifies the means. And so however you win, then you can go and see people to come and beg. But they still want to commend you for the show. Um, it's like Kennedy or Japan. Even after he has lost, he still thought that, look, some members did a good job for me. We did not win. But let's part ourselves. Yeah. Let's have something to share. And that should be the spirit, that in the game, you can win. Yeah. You can lose. Otherwise, you don't see that my favorite new team, because of Kudus, will go and lose miserably yesterday. <laughs> anyway, that's coming You're from You're also reminding me of our loss yesterday. They said we were beaten by 3 1 by Kotoko. Hey! The most painful thing. What, what team do you support? Accra has a folk. I'm a Accra has a folk fan. I'm surprised. Yesterday. I bleed Accra has And we're playing folk. home as well. Don't worry. We will win it. Don't they worry. walloped you. It's 3 1. It, woto, 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 no, no, woto. this one they were, they were cheating. <laughs> anyway, uh, talking about elections, let's start off with our conversation there before we delve into our other conversation. Now, uh, the MP has accused a account, uh, Controller General and Accountant General of giving some uh, delegates. Monies. Actually, he says they put them on salaries, monthly salaries, uh, before the election so that they can vote him to become an aspiring member of parliament. We know that uh, the controller and accountant general has actually debunked it. But could it be that there's some iota of truth in it? Or it's just one of those propagandas just to make sure that somebody will lose a vote somewhere. But this MP is actually calling on the special prosecutor, office of the special prosecutor, to investigate into this so that we can stop monies being exchanged during elections. Let me start this conversation with you, Bernard Mona. Well, having welcome everyone, 
And let me say, I enjoyed this uh, segment before this time, um, particularly that there was a young man in between two beautiful ladies. I just envied him. Um, oh, you can also see here. Eh? The man is still excited. You can see the joy. Um, I listened to my brother, Edward Abambire Bawa. I have known him for a very long time, from mm -hmm. our school days, mm -hmm. when he became Nook's president. I was one of the people gunning to succeed him. Myself, John Kuma, Ebenezer, and uh, John, uh, what is his name? Edward Omani Buama. We contested the elections immediately after Edward Bauer. And of course, Omani won that election. I have been working with Edward Bauer when he was an, a worker at the Ghana Football Association. And so I know him very closely. We've been, in fact, he used to call me for lunch mm -hmm. almost all the time. And so I know him very closely. I can say that whatever information that Edward Bauer would put up is not normally hearsay. He has proof. Anybody that goes to Parliament, and I have to admit that this morning in coming here, I spoke to him. But I always do many things. I even tried and I spoke to the controller and accountant general because okay. I wanted to get the side. And I spoke to Edward Bauer. And I told him that ah, this information that has been passed, you passed. I'm aware that the MP has been speaking the same in Parliament and at many corridors. But the MP has issued a statement. So I actually forwarded the statement to Edward Bauer and said, the MP has issued a statement to say that, look, the allegations that you have made is not true. Controller or the MP? The MP, the, the, current, MP. the current MP. Canada Senyaku. Yes, has issued a statement saying that the allegations about the controller are not true. And that there is no one on salary, no delegate is on salary. And yet the same MP has been excited Soon after Edward Bauer made the statement. Politics, eh? No, I don't even want to say the kind of things he might have said to Edward Bauer. Immediately after the show. Then you go and issue a statement to say, no, 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 no. People are not on salary. In any case, Edward Bauer did not even say that they are on government payroll. So if my good brother has money and decides that he's going to support people in whatever form, mm -hmm. Why not? He is a businessman. He has his farms. If people are on his farm, they will be on salary. When you have your businesses, are people not on salary? They are on stipends. So somebody come and say, oh, I'm working for this man, and I am on salary. Does that mean that the person necessarily is a delegate? Could it be that these people are delegates? Some could be delegates. Some could be delegates. Why? In this country, who doesn't know that about 80% of GN group, right, workers, were members of the Progressive People's Party. Who doesn't know that? Mm. And that most of them, whilst they were working, they were also holding various offices, regional chairman, uh, national communication, this, general secretary of this. Who doesn't know that? And so does that mean that they cannot function? And so me, in all this, yes, he has made the allegations. Let us go and investigate. If they are not on government payroll, fair enough. Controller is free to go and do his job. And indeed, he has come to say that he cannot do that. I cannot see how he's going to put people on government payroll when they have not been yeah. um, offered employment by any institution. In, a, in any case, he doesn't even put the people on the payroll. The people are put on the payroll, mm -hmm. and his duty is just to pay them. So. Ministry of Health will employ, Ministry of Education will employ. Then his duty is that payments have come. Look, we have gone through, we have ratified that these persons should be paid, and you paid. Mm. So I don't think that there's a, a problem there as to putting them directly on government payroll. But it is the hypocrisy of the MP. Mm, that's why you have it. But then we also talk about vote buying. Yes, the There MP cannot be doubt about vote yes. buying. See, why? I just finished speaking about the... 
uh, what's the name of the Aboso? What's the name of the constituency? Your constituency? Abrekuma Sanctra. That why the highest bidder won. So the highest bidder meaning that the person. Yeah. Had some votes behind yeah, that. of course. Last week, when I was here, you were playing videos. Yes, we played videos. It we was did. not me. It was you who went to yeah. capture people. And the OSP subsequently said, these people yeah, who are to. only recipients and not the givers, they are not <laughs> arresting the givers. Mm -hmm. They are arresting the recipients that come. And they, even in those videos, they indicated who and who gave them the money. Mm -hmm. So That's my constituency. Eh? That's, my constituency. That's your constituency, yeah? Yeah. 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 So they indicated who and who gave them money. So why are you not going to arrest those people and say that also you are wanted by the OSP for these allegations and you are only arresting these poor persons who only receive the money? So yes, vote buying is something that we must all decry. Mm. And if you don't work at it, I can tell you, look, we sit down and then all of a sudden, People even from other political parties have to go and see this person, go and see this mm -hmm. person. And we are picking all the signal. I am terrified that, look, the over-monetization of our democracy simply means that democracy will collapse. Mm. You know what? No, tell us. Let me tell you. If we don't keep this over-monetization, this democracy will be taken over by terrorists and rebel groups. How? How is that going to happen? They will get funding. They will fund people to win elections. They will buy their way out. Criminals, drug barons, money launderers will find a way to take over the system. Mm. And when they take over the system, they get security. So your defense will be in their control. Your interior will be in their control. Your foreign affairs will be in their control. They will take the commanding heights of your economy. You are doomed as a democratic country. And so, we must not take these things lightly. And I don't think that is light. So I, I think that Nyako, the kind of game he wants to play, you go around everywhere talking about controller has put people on salary. When an MP also go and says it, then you somersault, call the MP to thank the MP, and then you issue a statement at the blind side of everybody to say that it is not true. Are you the controller? Could it be that he's been coerced to do that for the safety of the party? Well, he, he won against the former, yeah. um, a former MP, right? He won. And that former MP was a brother to uh, uh, the current uh, uh, controller and accountant general. But even controller himself has contested the same concerns <laughs> with the brother. Yeah. Mm. And the brother won. won. Yes. And when the brother won, the brother won in 2008, mm -hmm. 2013. <laughs> and then Kennedy contested with the brother yeah. and yeah. won, won in 20, um, 20, the next mm -hmm. primary, mm -hmm. which is 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so there's nothing wrong with being contested. Uh, this thing about trying to blackmail somebody, using people, making pronouncements, then he, all of a sudden you turn around. I'm sure that it will not be long. You hear that the controller also wanted to sacrifice his sister to become a <laughs> The allegations. Uh, yeah, now, no, no, but what... they did that to, to Evan. <laughs> yeah. so... This is what Ed Edward Bauer said. He <clears throat> said, uh, currently, as we sit on live radio, we know the current sitting controller and accountant general, Kwesi Kweni Mbosompim, is vying to contest one of the seats in the central region. Every delegate has been put on salary. Now, he made emphasis on every delegate has been put on salary. And he what has been doing that for yeah. about two yeah. years. Yeah. So for the past two years, is alleged that they've been receiving salaries. Uh, and he said, that's what I hear. So yesterday, you had a situation where people were now texting and saying, incoming MP, if I say, if you have a situation where you control my money, there must be a law on how you deal with some of these things. So his issue has to do with the fact that this man is even their controller and accountant general, and he is controlling Ghana's money. So we have to be very careful about it. Rizling, you, you could later read let me, the, let me, the MPs. I've there. already greeted all of you, you but it? let me also um, say that I'm so much happy. I don't know whether um, last week Bernard enjoyed this place because I can see a new change, <laughs> everything new. But when they were bringing that, but I wanted to do what Bernard did the last time. Mm -hmm. When I entered, I wanted to carry my own chair. <laughs> But I was confused with the chairs I should carry. And which of the cameras you should look into? <laughs> oh, I did that. Though. You used to do it all the time. <laughs> um, no, you were not here last week. I said, I can tell you, 
A baboon was crashing on a lady here. Really? I tell you. <laughs> From the Royal Cozy Hotel in Drapa. Uh, it's true, though. Now I'm free, so if you are going, you have to go with me. <laughs> no, I didn't go. They no, went, they, they, and they, we were yes. here. So our team went, and what better they say is true? He's not lying. Really? Our team went, and a baboon was crashing on a sea door. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Fortunate. You could see her excitement. <laughs> And she said, look, I'll play the video for everyone to see. And when she was even going, the monkey was doing like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey man, please take care for it. In fact, I watch um, Bawa on Saturday on TV3. But when he was making that statement, I was like, ah, what is really happening? Because... I'm looking at the caliber of the controller and accountant okay. general. Mm -hmm. That if it's contesting, which I know and I've heard, and not that I have heard, but I've even had a confrontation with him that he has even confirmed to me, yes, yes, he's going to run. So I know he's running. But to that extent of putting delegates on salary, and by the first place, he's not contesting the central region. It's in the eastern region. Mm -hmm. I, I came straight through. And that's my wife's uh, hometown, too. Okay. So, if controller decided to run as a parliamentary candidate, which he has done, he has run there before. Oh, right. In fact, he ran the constituency with his own brother, his other brother. They were, the two of them even went for primaries, and the brother won. It was later that Kennedy Osanyaku came in. But ben, uh, Kennedy never, uh, sorry, Bauer never mentioned Kennedy Osanyaku's name. Yeah. No, he didn't. That maybe he has so put this thing out there. Statement. That, oh, but you know, we are doing politics. And that's what Bernard Riley said. People will be saying things and will be hiding behind people and be saying all manner of things. But the point of the matter is that if indeed controller has put people on the payroll, are they working for him to become a parliamentary candidate or they are working for him in his company or whatever he has? Or he has just put them on salary that he's been paying them every month without doing any work for, for mm. him. But let's turn to what he said. How can you put all delegates on salary? Oh. It, 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 it's quite alarming, isn't it? I all went, delegates, two I, years. I went to a Furna in the same eastern region. And when I give the donation, the MP in that constituency, who ha also happens to be a minister, came to the funeral. What I gave, the same amount of money he shared to all the funerals that were happening on that day. Assuming I give 1,000 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. When he came, they have about seven or eight funerals on the funeral ground. Everybody 200, everybody 300, everybody 50 Ghana. So when he came back and sat beside me, I said, ah, my brother, so your place, is that how you give um, donation? You can't give 200 and 100 in a crowd. They say, hey, master, wait, stop there. Yeah, we don't give big money. So okay. And I asked him, how many police executives do you have? As of 2016, he has less than 300 delegates. So if he's in fact, currently, as I'm speaking with you, if I'm not mistaken, um, the deputy, the, the chief whip of the NDC, uh, what is his name? Uh, mm -hmm. Agboja. Mm -hmm. As of 2020, he has 38 police stations. So if they have the same 38 police stations in, in Adaku for MPP, multiply 30, uh, five times 38 people. That's a total number of delegates. Less than 200. But now it's more. For the MPP. Yes. For the MPP. Because the NDC, they have about 9 or 11 so, so what at, the, you, at the branch. So in, but we have only 5. For, so in effect, what you're saying is that if the delegates are 400 and looking at the area, he can be giving them maybe 100 cities each every month. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And it's, it will still be enough. Ah, even if you give them 50 Ghana card, the people will really appreciate it. Because of the area? Because of the area. But as Bernard rightly said, we need to investigate it. Mm. Is it true that he has put them on salary? 
Is it true that you have put them whether on government salary or not? And if you have put them on government salary, how was he able to put them on government salary? In what category did they form, find themselves? Are they teachers? Are they doctors? Are they whatever? Because you cannot just put people on government salary without mm -hmm. being government workers. Mm. So if they are being put on controller salary, then controller have questions to answer. To, to answer. What if they have been put on his personal salary, not controller salary? If... I don't know whether it is true, but I'm doing my own investigations. I'm told that I have about three or four people who also be paying their, uh, their delegates. Oh, so it's not just him? Oh, that's what I'm doing my own investigations but that, to find that, out whether that, it is true. There's a cause to worry here for us because this is more voter buying. Whether if he's put them on controller salary or on his own pocket salary, is still vote buying, and this is what Bernard is saying that oh, we ought to be very careful about. Rosalie, for instance, I've decided to be taking care of some aged in my constituency, giving them some money every month. It does not amount to vote buying. Mm. One of my colleagues who contested with me has put widows and widowers on monthly salary. Every month he gives them something, but he's still lost. But we know that it's widows. This is... It's the same thing. Is, no, it's the same we delegates. Are, we are hearing that it's The people that he has put on area. salary as widows and widowers are delegates. No, but if you're saying all delegates, then that's a problem. Two I, years. I'll be extremely surprised if controller can put all delegates on salary. Okay. Why, right. why, see, why is the MP the one now issuing statements? Let me go on if he here. Was not the one <laughs> some who initiated comments this coming in. I'll start from uh, the. We have a lot of comments. Okay, so we start from this morning. Let me start from here. Okay. So 601 at 601, that's when our very first comments came in. Let's see what we have. Okay, so Ghanaian should not consider Baumia as a better candidate to solve the economic crisis we are facing today. We must collectively join hands and vote or out of power. Uh, 2024, simple, and uh, this is coming from Ablade Efiakoma Zongo. Okay. All right, so this says happy birthday, let's see. Okay, this one says hello. Okay, we, I think we are having a lot of hellos coming in. Let's see what this says. Well, you go blackmailing your. Okay. All right, so this one says hello, Joy. Okay, hello to you. Good morning to you. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I click on it. Okay, so good morning to you, introducing of introduction of a democracy governance open ground or give room for inclusive particip participation. And also, when you study the local government system very well, you will notice or figure out that assembly members are second to last with regards to position and unit committee members are the least. And this is where the inclusive participation of the people starts indirectly. My point is that the assembly system has been flagged with political colors indirectly and this is gaining root and acceptance indirectly, which is not supposed to be so. I think the media and other governmental institutions that are in to civic education must wake up against the, this negative practice, which is unconstitutional. Hashtag love, hashtag respect, Eron Bebako Koko Misa. Okay, let, let me see. All right, so Koresko Zakaria Sunyani says... Um, Ghana is tough, Ghana is hard. It's because of three nuisance factors. Nana Ogu Ejuma Baumia, the liar, Ken Oferiata, the killer. We must get rid of them to have freedom come in 2024. MPP is a scam. I wonder what incompetent Baumia is going to tell Ghanaians what his vision is and how it's going to be implemented. If he has no policy, stop criticizing Mahama 24 hours economy. It's feasible, it will happen. So it is not possible in vacuum as visionless Baumia touted. Mahama is winning 2024 
the mess they've created, uh, they've created no way. 2024 elections is do or die, no cost. Ghanaian delegates, you know better. Vote, vote, Mahama, vote. NDC greetings, Alaji Al Hassan, Mayanka, Regional Communications Officer, Charles Akowa Bono. Okay, Baumia is always accused uh, JDM about 24-hour economy, economy that will change the life of young Ghanaians and bring development as well. Baumia should bring his policies for Ghanaians uh, compared to two of them and choose the right, the candidate. All right. Okay, Ama Abdul Bashit uh, from... Wow, please, I want to tell my brother that they should stop worrying themselves because it's not going to be easy for them at all come 2024. <laughs> okay, Rosalind, I like you always. I like to see before I step out. Odro mentions that she will, so thanks. Okay, thank you so much for liking me. <laughs> and thank you for supporting all the time. All right. So Ghanaian, uh, Ghanaian politics is gradually losing its credibility. The ability of one to lead is now determined by the size of wallet and not about policies and ideas. A lot of constituencies are left undeveloped as a result of vote buy. And it's quite clear from the NPP parliamentary elections that money sharing played a major role in securing victory for the winners. How can we go forward as a country if this act of vote buying is allowed to continue? Daniel Akpaliok from Sandema is so sad that people are now embarking on the tangent of using money to win power to satisfy their individual parochial uh, interests, leaving the electorates to their fate. We need to, as a democratic country, criminalize vote buying and attach serious sanctions to it to deter politicians from engaging in such corrupt attitude. Let's give our mandate to persons who are ready to selflessly serve in the interest of the entire Ghanaian citizenry. We need developers and not persons who want to amass wealth for personal gains. Daniel Akpaliok, Sandema. Good morning to you, Daniel Akpaliok. All right, so good morning to you and your panels for this wonderful show. My contribution to your program today is that is to advise politicians to always respect the ordinary citizens, but not to always show arrogance after winning political power. Thank you. And this is from my humble, from humble lion inside Shukura. All right, humble lion. Okay. Good morning, Rosalina. I agree with my brother Bernard. If we don't take care with this vote by him, hmm, we will not get good leaders in this country. I'm Marcella from Garu. Good morning, Marcella. Good morning to you, Madam Rosley, and to your panelists. Hmm, if crocodile eats its own eggs, what wants it to do to the flesh of a lizard? If these people can go to the extent for just their own internal election, what about the general election? So these are the plans that they have towards 2024 elections. That is why they have the hope of breaking the aid. But inshallah, we have prepared for them. My question to Honorable is that what is he looking for in MPP? He too planning to mobilize millions of cities, dollars, euro, etc. before leaving just like others. I believe the people are watching and listening. For the controller issue, nothing is impossible in this government. They can do anything for power except returning the dead person back to life. My regards to incoming MP for me on constituency, Alaji Misbao, Sumani Hamza. Thank you, Sumani. The OSP, the OSP must not target government appointees. He might not win any case. He should rather target the government institutions Justice Insura from SBS Technology, Ghana. Okay, so... Hi, Rose. Tell the NPP spin doctors that Ghanaians will never make another mistake to vote for scammers to break the eight, either after their massive failure, economic mismanagement, abuse of power, brutalities, human rights, abuse, or told hardship, massive corruption, lutocracy, nepotism, and the destruction of our institutions and water bodies. NPP, never again, because workers are still suffering. Nurses and doctors are suffering. Teachers and lecturers are suffering. And pensioners are suffering with a haircut by this wicked and insensitive regime. Hey, our messages are a lot, too. <laughs> okay, so controller itself is corrupt with ghost names. No wonder they'll put people's salary. Uh, good morning, Evans Ellen Belair. All right, Evans, thank you so much. Good morning to you and your panelists on the show. I'm really happy about Mr. Bernard's submission today. Bernard, you're getting a lot of fans.
Okay, this one, it seems the person has sent a lot of me. Okay, good morning, my dear Rosé, your panelists. I want to take this opportunity to extend my warmest felicitations to Honorable Ajia Lariba Abudu Zuera, Member of Parliament for Wale Wale Constituency, that the constituent is grateful for her good work, a greater vision. Uh, Ajia Lariba, Member of Parliament, is charismatic by nature and unwavering hard work. Ethic make her the best person. All right, thank you so much for sending in this message. Okay, Alaji, uh, hands up, pick fam. Good morning, Rosalind. We should be truthful to ourselves in this country and speak the truth for once. Dr. Baumia should be told in the face that he should stop his, this attack on President Mahama and tell Ghanaians what issues and ideas and policies he has for us. Dr. Baumia goes around talking about digitization. For, God, for God's sake, was he the one who built the National Digital Center? He came to meet the National Digital Center. So he should give credit to President Mahama. Dr. Baumia goes round saying he's going to provide Ghanaians with blue economy. He should tell us the meaning of blue economy. Rosalind, can you believe Dr. Baumia went to Yendi and told the overlord of Dagon that the NPP will provide air trips uh, for the good people of Yendi? This is an insult to the overlord of Dagbon and the good people of the north. I am particularly happy because the 2024 elections is going to be on trustworthy experience and competence. All right, I think that will be all for now so we can continue with our discussion and uh, we have a lot in store as well. So we move on to our next topic. <laughs> Let's move on to our next topic. And it's to do with the passage of the LGBTQI bill. And uh, we know one man who has been championing it is Honorable Sam George. He's been championing it. He's been saying that it ought to be passed. Now, when we come to Africa, a country like Uganda has criminalized it. A country like uh, Kenya has actually passed the bill. However, it's a little liberal because they are allowed to form the groups, but you cannot practice any form of gayism or lesbianism in public domain. Neither can they marry. When you look at certain African countries who have legalized this bill, uh, it's actually um, um, a few. But a lot of Africans are calling on their countries to make sure that the bill is passed and Ghana is one of them. Of course, we know the parliament will be going on recess very soon. And we know the Speaker of Parliament has spoken and he has assured Ghanaians not to worry at all because... This bill will be passed before they go on research. South Africa, Cape Verde, and Mauritius are countries that gayism is really allowed and it's sort of legalized. But aside that, the other countries are still in a limbo. And Ghana wants to get out of the limbo to be a part of those who pass this bill. Will it be passed before research? We don't know. But definitely, my guests have their opinions as well. So let me start this with you, Ebenezer. Who's Lynn? Um, I think I, list, I listened to the speaker somewhere last week because um, there has been a debate on this passage of the bill. Mm -hmm. And I heard the speaker very well saying that he will ensure that they will do everything possible to pass the bill. I have listened to speaker on several occasions on this matter. And it informed me that he has already taken a stance. a stance on this bill issue. A stand that he has condemned it on numerous occasions that he had opportunity to talk about the bill, that he is not in support of it. I don't think that any sensible human being living on this earth in this country of ours who supports this bill. I will be extremely surprised that when this bill is being put um, for the third time to be read in parliament for it to be passed, I will have one single MP that will vote against the bill. The bill. I'll be surprised. I am only disappointed that it look as if that we have left the fight in the hands of Sam George alone. That's my disappointment. Mm. But you could have because also championed it. I believe so well that we have 275 members of parliament. 
Yes, others might have their views and their this and that. But we are talking about a bill that will not only prevent evil deeds, but also things that some a bill that will help us. Today, as I'm speaking with you, and I always ask myself, why is that those who do these gay issues? Only the rich are the men, and then the women are the poor people. How? Those who have the money, mm -hmm. they are the men. Oh, really? Oh, yes. And those who don't have the money are yeah, the women. women. Oh, you mean the top, the top and the bottom? Yes. Oh, so the, the, the poor are the bottom and yes. the top are the yes. rich. Okay. Right I see. And then at the end of the day, they suffered. Hmm. It, 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 is, it is something that sometimes I, but I always ask myself, ah, why, why would you, why would you want even to involve yourself into this satanic act? I'm just praying and hoping and believing because I know Parliament will be rising somewhere 23rd or 24th that this bill needs to be passed because in 26, 2017 to 2021. When we're in parliament, we pass a lot of bills within that four years. Mm -hmm. And I think this current parliament is also doing well. And therefore, I want to urge the speaker of parliament and leadership of parliament that if indeed we are so much concerned about this bill, yes, I know this week they are doing estimates of the budget. Mm -hmm. When they are done with it, this will be one of the priority of parliament to, to ensure, to make sure that we pass this bill. There are other bills that people are also calling on it. But I think that this is the most important one. Because this is what Ghanaians are talking about. It. Clergymen are talking about it. Even the Islamic community are even talking about it. The president said it will not be under his watch to see legalizing gay in this country. Sorry, in this country. Oh, yeah. Former President Moss, may he so rest him, speak against it. John Mahama have done say. So if we have these three leaders of ours mm -hmm. who have all not in support of it and who have been president and current president, I don't see why we cannot pass the bill. In fact, I met some George and we're talking about this bill. Mm -hmm. And he said something that, in fact, I was really, really disturbed about it. That because of the champion of this bill, it nearly even cost him in his primaries. Because there were people supporting the person that he is contesting with. And just as Bernard said, that if care is not taken, it will get to a point in this country of ours. You can only get a political position when you associate yourself with certain group of people. But, but uh, Ebenezer, I like that you're saying that you don't think there should even be one person against it. But let's not forget that just last week, we saw Honorable Sam George very angry and saying that the majority in Parliament were the ones obstructing the passing of this bill. So who are, who are the majority in Parliament that are obstructing it? Because obviously, if everybody is in agreement, is he, why the wait? If, why the back and forth? Why hasn't it been passed? If he says that majority as you realize, yeah, you could not even mention anybody's name. And I don't think that the majority can prevent the speaker from passing this bill. The only thing the minority, majority can do is to work out if the bill is being put before them. And I'll be surprised that if this bill is brought to parliament for the passage, majority will work out or they will not even show their support. You should not forget that the chairman for the committee is a, is a majority member. So I'll be extremely surprised about it. The, the, I just the, the want to urge, yet. that's why I'm appealing to the speaker and leadership, because whatever will be discussed during the week is being discussed by the speaker and leadership of the parliament. Mm. So therefore, it should be at the business committee for them to discuss, that, look, this week we are doing budget. We are, we are finished, we have passed the budget. We are done doing estimates. Estimates will not take more than, uh, how do you call it, three, four days to pass estimates. Well, I think there are people out there who also have, you know, they, they have thought on this bill is that it's still criminalized to the extent that if you are caught, you can face a death penalty, that 
some countries actually go through, but it's not so in Ghana here. What it is to do is to make sure that we restore family values and also we have proper sexual, you know, um, um, what's the right word to use? Proper sexual, human sexuality, you know, in, in, in Ghana. So we don't have people, you know, doing all sort of things and contaminating the system. This is why the bill is supposed to be passed. Yes, because I've not read, in a, I, I've had a copy of the bill. And there's nowhere in the bill that, that says yeah, that it's criminalized. If if, yeah. if, if, if you are being caught, mm. you be you you, you they, will, they will stone you to death. No, or, it's not. It's, it's not, just that yeah. we are putting it in the right perspective. And we have to restore human. This is what we are supposed sexuality. to do. We are we are not animals. Even animals don't do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have to. Just as Ben has said that somebody was enjoying himself herself when he went to the home. <laughs> Anyway, let me bring Bernard into the conversation. Bernard. First, I think it's important to look at it that either the media or the promoters of the media are getting the bill wrong. The bill before Parliament is proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the bill before Parliament. Yeah. For how anyone could caricature that to mean it's anti-LGBT bill is the imagination of that person. Because when this bill is passed into law and anybody comes to this country and is looking for anti-LGBT, or even you, you go in search of anti-LBGT act, you, won't get it. you will not get it. And so it's important to situate it that it is proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values. Now, what is proper human sexual rights? That a man has sexual intercourse with a woman or a woman has sexual intercourse with a man. It is improper for a man to remove your penis and trust in the anus of another man. For a woman to use your vagina running on another woman's vagina, this is not normal. Is, is, is it demonic? I cannot talk about the demonic nature, but I'm telling you that have you ever heard that a vagina and a vagina has produced a baby before? Mm. Or a penis and a penis have produced a baby before? What it means is that it's not right. And so if people are engaging it, they have a mental and a psychological problem. And when you have a problem, you treat that problem. We can have compassion for such people who are awkward and doesn't understand. Why? There are many people, and I have encountered people. Look, there are women that walk from the time that they became adolescent to over 40. And no man has been able to look at them and say, you look beautiful. Can you be my girlfriend or something? They've not heard that word before. No one has said to them, I love you. So it gives them the impression that, no, something is wrong with them. There are men who are timid to the core that, Rosalind, if they admire you, they cannot say it. And so they become queer. It's an abnormality that requires treatment. So how do you treat such people? There are facilities, right? You have the Moses Fo, Amonin, Wilson, Emmanuel Wilson Jr. and Co. They have constituted themselves. We have the counselors. We have the psychologists. They have a way to tune people to proper human rights, uh, sexual rights. It is abominable for anyone to get up and say, that a man is going to have sex with another man, and that is their right. So grant them their right, legalize it for them. Where is this nonsense coming from? Where is this nonsense coming from? And that nonsense is coming from the West. The same West will not allow you to be polygamous, which is part of the Ghanaian family value system. The polygamy, right? Do you understand? So if you go there and you marry one and you marry two, it's criminal in their law. 
Have you heard Africans going to their countries to be promoting polygamy or poly, uh, polygyny? It is not done. And so why are they forcing on Africans what they consider? Look, this nonsense cannot survive in our country. In those countries, they will have a wife and have several mistresses. Mm. But it, it, you understand? Do we Here have... we are talking about, look, I cannot, and I'm surprised. Look, you said Sam George did not mention him. Sam George mentioned the chairman of the, 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 the committee. He mentioned Animado and saying that Animado is deliberately frustrating the efforts and that everything has been done. And Animado is, not, is the one that is frustrating their efforts. So he mentioned, and Animado came out to respond that if they want to do it that way, the bill will not see the day of light. But I can assure him this bill will be passed. Maybe he will not see the day of light in his constituency, but this bill will be passed. Because everybody in his constituency are excited that we are going to pass a law about proper human sexuality right or sexual right and Ghanaian family values. And you say that you will not allow this bill to be passed on your partisan lenses. It will not. I have heard opinion markings. And said that listen to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is of the opinion that I have. That look, these people, we should look at them with compassion. Mm -hmm. There's something that is wrong with them. Just as we look at those who are mentally derailed in society with compassion, and we give them a certain care, so these people are not normal. So we should give them a certain care. We should give them care. In fact, when we identify them, move them to psychologists, move them to the hospitals. And you think that will change them? Some will change. Some of them, their annuses have been raptured. <laughs> right? And... If you meet for Amoni and others, those who have decided to change, they come and tell you that, look, we thought we would even get money in this endeavor. It ended up not being the case. Yeah. But it's difficult for me. If myself and Eben, we walk into a hotel and we are doing our things in our room, how will you come and know? Because the doors will be locked. Mm -hmm. Rosalind, if you walk there with, uh, what's the name of it's it? It's Edouard. It's and you are in some room, even in your house, it will be difficult for anyone to come and know. Except if they begin to suspect your movement and they come and lay away, or somebody put a camera, or you yourself decide to put a camera and it leaks. So yes, some people can be engaged in it. But let's not legalize the act of a man sleeping with a, a, a man, a woman sleeping with a woman. It's unthinkable. But do you think this will affect, you know, our relationship with the West in a way? Because uh, these are people that we <coughs> actually go to for financial aid. Who cares whether it affects, if because we say that we will not allow a man to sleep with a man, we will not allow a woman to sleep with a woman, and the United States of America says that because of that, they want to come and, um, what do we call it, dig out their embassy from Ghana, we will welcome them. They should come and take it out. Probably because you are not in power, that's why no, you're saying No, they this. should take it out. In fact, the United States of America is part of the brains of our problem, uh, our, our, our nation. How? Why? Are they not the ones who led the CIA, infiltrated and overthrew Kwame Nkrumah? Are they not the ones who caused the havoc in, 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 in Congo, and Congo cannot be in peace? Are they not the ones who led the struggle for Gaddafi to be removed? But Go to every country where there is turmoil. Are they not the people supporting Israel to be doing the madness in Palestine today? But so, you have a so lot clearly, of Ghanaians who are dreaming of obeying in the United no States of doubt, America. No because, doubt, because Ghanaian labor was used and stolen to go and build the United States of America. So going there does not mean that we believe in their doctrines. We believe that there is opportunity there to make us better human beings. Mm. So there's no doubt about that. So I am saying that if our non-association with man fucking man, woman sleeping uh, uh, with a woman. It's too early. That word is too early. What, 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 what word? That a man fucking a yeah, man. That is what should word. I say? No, you can say sleeping with, or oh, because that word is too is is, is, is okay, not allowed. Okay, a man having sex with Good. a man. Good, that's fine. Oh, you don't. But that's like more. That. That's more even. No, that's not the really? word. Yes, that that <laughs> word is actually which word prohibited. No, I can't say it. <laughs> okay, it's not, it's, I, I will attempt yes. to speak it in P. No, 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 no. Say no, 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 no,
Yeah, but that, that, that particular word is not said anywhere. It's a curse. I, I have said it's, it. It's termed as a curse. Yes. Oh, yes. So I'm no, cursing curse, those people. No, not as a curse, as in you are cursing them, but it's a curse word. So, so that, yes. that, that when you go to fuck something, yeah. a man is fucking a man. Bernard Mona, you can't say that on live television, I have please. said it. <laughs> I have said it. And it is my, my, I take responsibility for it, not you. I know, but I mean that, okay. Let's so if they are suing, I am no. telling them that I am Nobody is suing, so, but it's But just... I'm saying that, why, why do you want to, like, you know... You're not sugarcoating, but when you said uh, that having sex, it's fine to use that word. That is not a swear word. This is a swear word, so let's not use that word. That's is it all. imaginable that a woman will go and be sleeping with a woman? So... Is it imaginable that a man will be sleeping with a man no, as you want wrong. me to use? Yes, it's wrong like that. That alone should tell you that there is some abnormality. And no one should want to legitimize abnormality as a right. Right? If you come and tell me that, oh, these people are gays, recognize their right. Their right to do what? Anyway, uh, let's see if we have some comments coming in. So, okay, let's see if we have some comments coming in. And then we quickly take the comments. And uh, we go on to our next topic. But um, so if it's not passed, what happens then? It will be passed. Okay. <laughs> it's not an issue of it. It's saying when it is passed. Because, you see, I didn't want to go mm -hmm. to the tangent, but they been even raised it. The president is double tongue on this matter. In one breath, the president is saying that there is not enough mobilization to lead to the passage of this. He even goes to say that, look, Women voting was seen as an abominable thing. Blacks voting was seen as an abominable thing. But because there was sufficient galvanization, look at the comparison the president is making. It led to the rights of these people. And that if there is sufficient mobilization, this will become a right in the president's dream. Hmm. The president then somersault. After he has gone to say this internationally, he comes to say that uh, not under his watch. Anyway, so... And then, um, when the vice president, Kamala Harris, came to Ghana, did you hear the president comments? It is some individuals who have taken this to parliament, and it is not the government. And that when they do their work, it will come to him. But this then brings me back to the so, question So clearly, this is a president who doesn't even want to sit and side with the people of Ghana. No, but let's also look at it, the, the relationship we have with the West, and that's what I... And because of that, earlier. we must compromise our values for the Western values. No, but, but you see... Look, we as, will as, take what is right. They cannot teach us what is right. As a party We are government. learning. We so, cannot so, allow so them me, to... If yes. I'm getting it, yes. you mean that we should not pass this I'm not because saying that. of the support no, we are getting? No, I'm not from saying that. I am saying that, you know, with regards to what Honorable Sam George said, that yes. there are some members... But, but, but who for are correction, the it's not only Sam George. There were about seven members. Honorable Bejra. Yeah. Um, Honorable Intim Fodjua, yeah. Al Hassan Sohini, um, um, I think Ablapa. Uh, mm -hmm. This, no, Abraqua is not part. There uh, are seven. Uh, Sam George. Francis And then, and then they, yes. Sam George is down. probably the spokesperson. But there yeah. are many, but I'm, there are about I'm, seven I'm, of them. I'm saying that with and regards Intim to Fodjua what he, he's he's championing. championing. And then, and then in Tosso. Okay, but with what he's championing, and he's saying that, you know, it's not being passed because of certain people there. I Madu. Madu. I'm saying, my question is, could it be that the, the, the fear of losing the kind of resources we get from the West is the reason why some of them are not willing for this bill to be passed? But I have not heard any... I'll ask you that. Any, I have not heard any of the members of parliament or government saying that because of the bill, support that we will be expecting from the Western world, we are not going to get it. Okay. It, has, it cannot be <clears throat> an option for us to pass to get a, a support, or we will not pass and we will lose those support. I don't think that this that, will be an option. Okay. Rosalind, yeah. be candid that you, mm -hmm. you choose to go and have <clears throat> sex with a woman. No, I Contrary won't. to a man. No, I won't. Why? Because I don't like it. Because it's not normal. <laughs> anyway, let's see some messages coming in if we do. Okay. Um, this one says, you're putting people's life into danger, showing their numbers on TV. Oh, really? Okay, we'll see what we can do. But I don't know how we are putting somebody's life into danger. But let's see. Uh... Okay, they want you to cut the message and leave their contacts away. <laughs> 
Anyway, so um, if, if, if any more messages come uh, in, we so will... So let me advise the, yes, the people that if you fear, don't do. If you do, don't fear. I don't, we are in a free country. Everybody can say what you want to say. Okay. And in saying so, you must not be under any... But of course, some people belong to some institutions mm -hmm. and they feel that they can be victimized if they are seen to be the ones giving out certain communications. So, for instance, if somebody is in the military and wants to give a certain information and the number is put out there and they go and do investigations and they find out the person, mm. they will be treating the person in a manner that you will not know that it is the message that has caused it. And so probably you should safeguard them. Okay. Um, Amisko Spelele Kaswa says, AKA Honorable Hawa Kumsi Ntwaso. Um, oh, well, fortunately then, it's quite difficult to read it like this, but the, okay, we'll see what we can do about it. Uh, hopefully, okay, now it's, it's fine. Uh, why are some SHS head teachers want to uh, sabotage our education system. In fact, charging on approved fees is unacceptable, and I commend GES for their interdiction. In fact, the law must deal with them. Hashtag free SHS has come to say, regards to Honorable Mavis Hawakumse, MP Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture Development. I love her, do. So you do, eh? I do. I love Hawakumse. <laughs> That's nice. Anyway, so um, if any more messages come in, quickly, let's talk about that last topic and then we go just briefly or five minutes where uh, the vice president has said that uh, he was misinterpreted when he said that you can use your Ghana card. A time will come where you can use your Ghana card uh, to aid in purchasing of a vehicle. He didn't say that would be your money for buying the car, but rather it will help with your credit score and it will help with tracking system so you can afford a car. But he says he's been misquoted. Bernard, you think he was misquoted? Before that, I am a product. I sit on this show because of education. So you want and to I've talk a bit about it? A little bit. Okay. Just permit me a minute or so. I think that we must not be quick to want to punish. There is free SHS. But head teachers and schools are collapsing under the weight of heavy indebtedness. And so, what did they ask for? Mm. Try shoots. Bola money, trucks. What is bola? Sanitation. These days, it is, look, people want to learn. And so you see that the school is dirty. They want to clear it. Or they have even taken the rubbish to one part. To take it away becomes a problem. And they cannot be living and staying with the stench. Government money is not forthcoming, and when it's coming, it's inadequate. Then these teachers or head teachers say, look, let's find a way to deal with it. And they say, we have introduced this. It is important that you come and look at the raison d'etre. What is the reason behind? Than to say that they cannot be, about 10 of them, mm -hmm. If it is one, then you say it's an isolated case. This is not 10. It means that there is something that is not right somewhere. And that either we are pretending that we are doing free SHS, and these headmasters, some of them cannot even go to their schools. Because you go there and people come and they are chasing them for their, their money, they are owing. I don't know much about it, but I think that it will be important to take a time to investigate properly, to find out whether they were taking these monies for their personal use, or indeed, it was being used for the purpose for which they were. Then you ask, why are you taking track suits money? Why are you taking this? Then they tell you that, look, these are the things we need. We cannot find them within the government support system. And so we ask that these things should be done. So if it is not supposed to be done, government should find a way to provide them with a the cushion. If you sack, sack them and somebody takes over and they will not do it, then you go to the school and the people there will suffer diseases. Right. Because there will be cholera outbreak because of the stench and the bother that will engulf the schools and what have you. So I think that, yes, if they are doing this and it is that they are extorting for their self-use, they should be taken to tax. Otherwise, I think that the heads of assisted secondary school chairs um, should also come and probably help in the investigations. Nagrat, Nat, and all those. Yeah, I think investigations are they should They should so. deal with it and not just think that, oh, this is what we have heard, and therefore uh, it is wholly true that they are taking money for themselves. If they are taking money for themselves, why not? It means that they are not deserving to lead 
our society. Right. Having anyway, said so that, the vice president's um, clearance on what he said. The vice president spoke in English, not in Mampuli, not in Dagbanli, not in Kusal, not in Dagari, and obviously not in Pew. He spoke in English. If our leaders will communicate without clarity, and it is for us to interpret what they, or somebody to come and tell us what they meant by their communication, then indeed we have a major problem. Because simplicity as a journalist is the hallmark of communication, that people must understand what you are putting out there. So when you speak, anytime you speak or your boss speaks, the people take it this way, then some people or you yourself now will come and say, no, don't take it that way. That is not what I meant. Then it means that there is a major challenge. Is it not the same vice president, leader of the new patriotic party now, that told us that he prefers one Ghana card to 10 interchanges? But that one, he didn't come and clear it. He yes, you know that he prefers he one, say, one, Ghana card, one Ghana card to 10 interchanges. Then okay. later, somebody, I saw somebody at the fuel station <laughs> using his Ghana card and saying that I want to pay with my Ghana card because one Ghana card is worth more than 10 interchanges. And if you know what we mean by interchange, go and see the example at Circle Dubai. Do you know the value of it? So it means that your communication is not straight. So if this is what the vice president is telling us, then I think that we need to take him back to the rudiments, the basic etiquettes of communication, so that when you are communicating, people don't get it wrong. Okay. Now, you come and say that why? One Ghana card, your Ghana card, can be used to purchase a vehicle. Then you come and tell us that it can give you, cred give you credit. The Ghana card is a bank card. It will help with your credit score. No, the Ghana card is no, a bank card. So they can track your credit score. If, if I'm coming to buy a car from you, right, and you don't trust me, you will not give it to me on credit. If you don't know me, you will not give it to me on credit. So if I have a Ghana card and I still come, and you give it to me on credit and I cannot pay, the Ghana card will not somersault to become the, the money to but, pay. But the Ghana card, no, he's not saying it will become the money. He says that it will be able, to, it will enable you to be trapped. So people were not so, buying cars when there was no, no Ghana no, card. That's not what Did you buy your Ghana card so, because you have it? So your let, card let's say I walk into a showroom and yeah. I want to purchase a car. Um, maybe it's difficult for them to track my record of, you know, my credit score. So my Ghana card has all my details. When they enter it into the system, it will it show, will your, show your, your bank account. Yes, everything. Your, so, it will, yes, so it will you, show how much money you have in no, your bank No, it will bank show account. your credit score, so you'll be able I to. I mean, see, see, your bank is different from your Ghana card. Ghana card is an identification. We say that it aligns your tax, it aligns your your health insurance and whatever you write. Your Senate it aligns so that it will make easy. For reference. Easy reference is not the same thing as credit score. Because the Ghana card cannot be mm -hmm. a substitute to your bank card. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. It cannot be the mm -hmm. solution to your credit worthiness or otherwise. Then those of us who have Ghana card, we are credit worthy. Okay. And so we can walk into any car dealer and say that this is my Ghana card. So take it and then give me a car. Is that what we mean? So communication and the simplified version of communication for our leaders. You are communicating to us. We are not at the standard of PhD. We are the standard of no HD. So speak to us at that standard. Don't come and give us big English when we understand it in one form. Then now you are struggling to come and explain to us. Why didn't you take your trouble to make it that, break it down at a point of communication? Okay. Now you are... Turning around to come and tell us something. Look, I think, I think, that, I think that Ghana card is useful. There's oh. no doubt about it. I think that it will enable for easy identification. Mm -hmm. I think that all national cards can be aligned to it. We should find a way to make sure that your Ghana card will be able to determine whether you are a proficient driver or not and what have you. So you don't need to carry multiple cards. Okay. But the kind of expectations we are putting on Ghana card, except we want to justify the kind of expenditure we have put in there. Mm. Anyway, uh, Ebenezer. Um, I think 
just as you rightly said, the vice presidents have come out to clear the air or the perception that people are alluding to it that you can use your Ghana card to buy a car. And I think with the explanation, in fact, when people started talking, I was just asking myself, how can you use your Ghana card to go and buy a car? I can't just go to Tesano with my Ghana card and say, I want to buy a car. No. Currently, as I'm speaking with you, the Ghana card that most of us have, have your detailed information about you. That is why me, when the EC were of the view that the only source of registration for the regist uh, voters' ID card is Ghana card, I agree with it, mm. 100%. Because... We all have a unique number. We all have all the information, how, they, how you can be tracked and what have been. And so, therefore, you cannot take advantage of anybody who you go to him for assistance or get something. What he's saying is that, yes, you go to Tesla or any Toyota or anywhere to buy a car. Whatever transaction you do, after you have done everything, definitely your, your Ghana card will be needed. Now... To be honest with you, people don't use any of their card apart from your Ghana card. Even at the banks. When you go now, they ask of your Ghana card. Even when you give them your voter's ID card, they will tell you it's not in the system. Mm. And they will prefer your Ghana card because that's where the information but is. But there's an issue of shortage as well. There, it's not everybody oh, that has a Ghana recently, card. So. Recently, money was released to NIA and they have given out cards. And you see, there are a lot of cards too at the office. But we still at, have at, a lot of people who don't have Ghana cards. But card. the people that we have, the people that have, are more than the people who don't have. And it's a fact. And there are thousands of cars at the various NIA offices and people are refusing to go for it. So for me, I think that the vice president have come to clear the air. It is not possible that you, you, you can just go to a center to just buy a car with your Ghana card, <laughs> but you can be tracked mm. if you get the access and you are defaulting the people. Ah, now, because of Ghana card, people are even going for quick loan. Now they don't sleep because you are easily to be assessed. You can easily be located. And just to add to a little to what Ben has said about the uh, outrageous bills that have been given by head teachers, and I'm told that about seven or eight of them have been interdicted. Ten have been interdicted. Last year, most of us were not happy with the way the system worked. Somebody has been posted to Wesley Girls. The person that he will get from Wesley Girls is different from Ebri Girls. It's different from Infantimai. You go to Aka Academy, it's different. Now, government have come out to say that, look, whether you are going to grade A or grade B or grade C boarding school, you're all giving the same person, you are giving the same thing. Yet still, you have head teachers who also want to take advantage of the system. Well, and make sure that he, they get what this they This is why investigations are ongoing. So, so definitely, you see, sometimes, get but sometimes, it, so. you need, when you do some of, I'm just hoping and praying that what has happened today will not read partisan nature in it. At the moment we start with that, we end the issue. You mean right. like this? So anyway, yeah, that's why yeah, investigations okay. are ongoing. Gentlemen, I will say a very big thank you to you for making it here this morning. We are super grateful. <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? It's like <laughs> you don't want to go. <laughs> no, I just wanted to let you know that I'm strict. I'm not a game. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> ben and Mona represented the PNC today. And actually, uh, hopefully, Ben and Mona will become the flag bearer for the PNC very wow. soon. Wow. Yeah. And uh, of I, course, I, I see that you can I, be I a competent animator. <laughs> you see you. <laughs> <laughs> and honorable Evan is at represented at the NPP today. Uh, so, thank you so much, gentlemen, much. for being here today. Much. Super grateful. My name is Rosalind Feli. This has been the News Flash segment. We have other conversations coming your way, and it's actually very interesting. We have women in business and we'll have entertainment. But before all of that, it's what's trending with the Seed World to stay.